Madhya Pradesh state. We are the fourth largest uh, party in parliament. We have more than 50% vote share in the assembly. We have 86% of the seats in the assembly. So this gives, this speaks about a lot of political stability, but it's also very important when the models to process. And the other aspect uh, is, Robert himself was, uh, was speaking of some time back. And I myself am also from a business community, probably among the globally, probably top five countries. And I also run a, a media company, that's also a successful company as well. So there is an element of business in me as well. So I do understand what the business is about, and I do understand that we need to support when it requires. And uh, to speak a few words about my state, it's one of these states which is 975 kilometers of coastline. Currently, it has four ports and six airports. And uh, everything goes well. We're targeting to enhance this by another four more ports, four, four, four to five ports. So, there is a tremendous amount of scope on the coastline. We are primarily an agrarian, 62% dependence on agriculture. Uh, we've uh, recently had a state divided, entire one cities of Hyderabad, given uh, away to Telangana state. So, uh, that's one of the reality that uh, we need to face. Our other important city, important city, would be Sacramento, I think. If everything goes well, we can develop that as a time in the city as well. So these are the few weaknesses, few strengths that we have. What I like to speak about is the importance of uh, any business community is if somebody were to come all the way to AP, come and set up a factory or set up something, it's very important that they trust the government. Uh, just to recap, uh, the way we're looking at Andhra Pradesh, uh, all of you know, we're particularly a long state. We have the second longest coastline. We have four operational ports. Uh, four more are going to come on stream in the next uh, uh, 24 months. Saying that, uh, again, uh, just to recap, uh, the Anantapur region, which is the southern tip, which borders by uh, Kar uh, Karnataka, is the automotive valley. And I think Kia is a great example of speed of doing business. We've done it, we've proven it, I think India can move. Uh, so, again, Kia is doing exceptionally well uh, based out of Andhra Pradesh. Then that brings us to Karnoor, which is our entire renewable energy hub. The solar, wind, pump storage hydro projects are coming out of there. And uh, post the drone summit, um, the Honorable CM has announced that Karnoor will be our drone valley. So, we'll, uh, we will create a sandbox from a regulatory framework perspective and so on and so forth to get Karnoor started. Uh, in that ecosystem. Uh, Chitur and Kadapa is now the electronic sub. Uh, we were manufacturing close to 25% of the cell phones uh, in India. Last five years, it was a bit of a pause in that sense. So we have actually degrown back to 5%. Uh, we now need to sort of reinvigorate that entire ecosystem, but we only have amazing players. Andhra manufactures almost 50% of India's uh, air conditioning. And there's going to be a few announcements uh, in the white group space coming out soon. So it's not just about the high tech, we also care about the low tech. Uh, jobs get created across the spectrum. Prakasam district is where your entire biofuels uh, ecosystem is coming out as part of an ICE policy, uh, integrated clean energy policy. We have the entire biofuel ecosystem coming out of Prakasam district. Of course, Krishna uh, Guntur is all about the capital region. In Amravati, which was on a pause, will now be accelerated. Government of India has been very kind and uh, we are going to see close to about 5-6 billion dollars worth of investment coming in to a greenfield uh, city that India has not really built uh, for the last uh, you know, few decades. So this will be in a two-spirit a greenfield city where it's not just about capital alone, it's about social infrastructure, creating economic activity of the 
So Amravati will be on hyperdrive. Uh, works are expected to start by December. So you have to understand the situation. <laughs> I started my education at street school. It's quite difficult for me to address a speech in Harvard. You have to <laughs> My teachings and thousand years uh, from late 70s to, to early 90s was a beginning and end for uh, so many cultural, social, social, cultural, and political changes happened. So for me, as a kid, I was uh, coming from a very small, lower third class family. My father was started his life as a police constable, and my mother being a housewife, and we are a family of five. So I was a sick child. I had a broken problem. So I had a good time. To contemplate about life's problems, whether it's the ball sake, not going to school. I stay at home, I still I have all the time to think about what's happening around me. So one, one day, maybe you uh, just finish my street, uh, street school, which means it's literally on the street. Uh, in a town, a small town called Ongo, my father shifted to uh, transfer to the small town. So they put me to another school, which is definitely a better school than what I used to study there, when I had studied earlier. So in school, one day we had a lesson. My teacher was telling about in uh, the class, the lesson's name is Mahabadi, it means our school. The lesson explains how beautiful our school is, and what kind of school it is. And we are such beautiful trees, we have a huge playground, and we have a lot of things to play, we have a beautiful library, we have this kind of books, so it goes on, goes on. And suddenly my teacher turned because I said something to my friend, and everyone was giggling. And I said, they're telling me, I said, what are you saying? And I said, I had a dog and I was shaking this guy, I said, what is it? I said, uh, our school doesn't have a playground, and we don't have books. And uh, we don't have any trees. And for me, what the teacher did, she told me to get up. And she gave the beauty of her life. Still now I can never forget. Because for me, the first time I realized in my life what had been written in the books, what had been said in the uh, in spoken word, and the reality are two different things. So for me, that has become a lifetime obsession to see the gap between what has been said and what has been done. That has become a lifetime obsession. So till now, my obsession is even in the political manifesto, it's still it manifests what they promise and what they deliver are two different things. So for that reason, it has become such an obsession to me. I lost my focus in my education, constantly I used to see issues everywhere, problems everywhere. So successfully, I failed in my exams. <laughs> <laughs> I successfully failed in my exams, so I could not continue my education. So I had to stop. So what I did, the reason was, I was so stressed out, and everyone in the my friends were going to Colorado, I mean, universities in America, and they were doing good things. And here I've been uh, failing, uh, I failed in 10th grade, I failed in 11th grade, I failed in 12th grade, I was consistently as I was failing. I went into some kind of depression.